uh, this is our topic uh, for today. We have to uh, discuss the tall like receptors, the functional groups in the tall like receptors, and uh, different evolutionary lineages. We, uh, we also have to discuss, uh, you know, about septic shock. Okay, these are the two topics that we have to discuss today. So, uh, the tall like receptors, uh, as you know, in the previous lecture, I told you that there are 10 genes coding for peptides that are expressed either on the surface of the cells or inside the cells. These receptors are not only found as part of the plasma membrane, these are also endosomal or these are present inside the cells. We call them tall like receptors. Okay? So, um, if you look at the functional, uh, you know, division of the tall like receptors. Uh, there are two functional groups, one group one and group two, okay. The group one tall like receptors, they are part of the plasma membrane or you can say that they are present on the surface of the plasma membrane. And these tall like receptors recognize carbohydrates, lipids and proteins. If you want to know about what are uh, the receptors that recognize these molecules? These are tall like receptor 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. Okay? 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. They are making group 1. And another group 2, these tall like receptors are retained within the membrane of endosomal vesicles. Okay? The endosomes that was found that you saw in the previous slide. Uh, you know, so these uh, receptors are within the endosomes. They are present inside the cell. And these receptors are recognizing different kind of molecules. You know, if you look there, group 1 are recognizing carbohydrates, lipids and proteins. And group 2 are recognizing DNA and RNA of the pathogens. Okay, the nucleic acids of the pathogens. And group 2 include tall light receptors 3, 7, 8, and 9. So these are different receptors included in group 2. If you take the example uh, of some of the group 1 receptors, for instance, TLR4, we just studied about, uh, you know, TLR4, the tall light receptor 4 recognizes lipopolysaccharide, which is part of the wall of gram negative bacteria. And, uh, you know, these signaling receptors actually are going to start with this process of inflammation. And we have, uh, you know, discussed this topic in detail before. If you take the example of group 2 receptors, you can take the example of tall like receptor 3. TLR3 recognized double stranded RNA which is characteristic of viruses, you know. Similarly, TLR9 recognize C plus G motifs, C plus G islands, uh, which are abundant in bacteria and viruses, but are rare in the case of humans. So these receptors can recognize nucleic acids, or they can tell the nucleic acids of uh, pathogens, from the nucleic acids of the human beings, you know, because in human beings these motifs are uncommon. And in pathogens like in bacteria and viral genomes, these mot uh, motifs are, uh, you know, very common. So that's why these receptors, the endosomal receptors, which are present inside the cell, can bind with such kind of nucleic acids which belong to the pathogens actually. So these are the functional character, uh, for functional groups of these receptors. If you look at the evolution of the tall like receptors in mammals, you know, so uh, there are four evolutionary lineages of these receptors and these are called lineage 1, 2, 3 and 4, okay. The lineage 1, it forms homodimers and all other lineages from 2 to 4, they are forming heterodimers. 
Homodimers means that they are uh, self, this is kind of self dimerization. In heterodimers, they are uh, dimerizing with a different type. And all these tall like receptors are present on the surface uh, 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 on five different chromosomes. Okay? And they recognize majority of the known pathogens, whether these are bacteria or viruses, fungi, etc. You know, I told you earlier that there are 10 tall like receptors, but these tall like receptors are recognizing so many different types of pathogens. So there must be some genetic diversity in these tall like receptors, which is making them capable to recognize so many different types of pathogens. Because the number of tall like receptors is, uh, you know, only 10. Okay? So, how 10 receptors can recognize 400, 500, or 1000 different kind of uh, antigens or different microbes? That is achieved with the help of this genetic polymorphism or diversity which is present in these uh, tall like receptors. So, these are the functional groups and these are the lineages that. Uh, uh, we talked about and this is the structure that we already have discussed uh, which uh, in which you can say this is a homodimer of a tall like receptor 4 okay these are the same horseshoe like receptor with a pathogen recognition domain outside the cell and a TIR domain on the inner side of the cell and this is a transmembrane domain that you see here. So these receptors dimerize to be functional. And you saw that dimerization we talked about in uh, you know this slide when we, we were talking about this assembly of the pathogen and the receptors on the surface of the macrophage, which activates this process of signaling. And the signaling leads to the production of different kind of molecules required for the inflammatory process. Okay, so <clears throat> here is the list of these evolutionary lineages of, you know, the tall like receptors. You can see in this column, this is lineage 1, 2, 3 and 4. And you can see the location of these uh, you know, uh, genes on different chromosomes in the next column and the ligands that what are different ligands recognized by the tall like receptor and what kind of, uh, you know, organisms are viruses, bacteria, etc. Uh, these ligands actually belong to. And then you can see, uh, you know, whether these receptors are present on some particular innate immune cells or, you know, all the cells are given in this column. And the last one is a cellular location of these receptors, which is telling you whether these receptors are present on the plasma membrane or whether these receptors are endosoma. So you can just go through it. These different receptors are used for the recognition of different RNA and DNA viruses or bacteria or fungi, etc. And the purpose of all this exercise of recognition is to get rid of the pathogen and to start with the process of inflammation. And these immune cells, all these cells of the innate immune system are involved in this process of inflammation. Okay, now uh, you can see here that the, this is, uh, you know, a cell with tall like receptors, different tall like receptors, like the tall like receptor 4, which is here, tall like receptor 1 and 2, which are on the other side, tall like receptor 3, which is in, uh, inside the endosome are inside the cytoplasm and these receptors are going to recognize different kind of molecules, you know. The tall like receptor 4 homodimers 
and the TLR1 and TLR2 heterodimers here, they are, you can say heterodimers, they are of different types, but they have dimerized together at the cell surface since bacterial infection. TLR4, that one over there, and TLR1 and TLR2, they are present at the surface of the macrophage or other, uh, you know, immune cells, and they are going to sense bacterial infections. The red one are bacteria that you see here. And the whole dimer of TLR3 here, it also has dimerized inside uh, uh, the endosome. It is going to recognize nucleic acids. Okay? So, these are the locations and the recognition of different ligands which actually are coming out of the degradation of the pathogens. When the pathogen is engulfed by the macrophage and the macrophage turns it into pieces, just like nucleic acids or carbohydrates or lipids, all these different blocks are disintegrated then there are receptors for recognition of all these different blocks and those receptors are the tall-like receptors. Now I told you that tall-like receptors, they are fewer in number, but they recognize many different types of pathogens, you know, and many different types of ligands that these are going to recognize. If you look at this, uh, you know, image, you can see here different tall like receptors recognizing different macromolecules. For instance, the lipids can be recognized by all these tall like receptor 1, 6, 10, 2, 4, etc. For nucleic acids, there are many tall like, uh, several tall like receptors like TLR3, 9, 8, and 7. And for proteins, there is TL, uh, TLR5. So these are different receptors. So if you look at the nature of the ligand, different tall-like receptors are going to recognize different ligands. Okay? Our groups of tall-like receptors can recognize the same ligands as you see here. Okay? So uh, these tall-like receptors should be polymorphic. You know, they should be in different forms. Why? Because only if these tall-like receptors are in different forms, they would be able to do this particular job, to recognize different kind of molecules, or to recognize different kind of pathogens that enter your body. So it means that they are genetically diverse, and this diversity increases due to prevalence of different allotypes in the population in human population. What are the allotypes? Allotypes are proteins encoded by different alleles of the same gene. Okay? So they have different allotypes. This variation is called genetic polymorphism. We call it genetic polymorphism. So this kind of genetic polymorphism in the tall-like receptors, if we talk about the tall-like receptor, you, you would see that genetic polymorphism is more common in the cell surface receptors. And the cell surface tall-like receptor is compared to the endosomal receptors. You saw the endosomal receptors just like TLR3 in the previous slide I showed you. Here you can see these are the endosomal receptors, TLR3, TLR7, 9, and 8. Okay. And these are the cell surface tall like receptors 2, 5, 6, 10, 4, 1. Okay? They are present on the surface of the cells, just like the surface of the macrophage or monocytes or other immune cells. So, people have studied all these different receptors, the genetic diversity in these receptors, and they have come up with this conclusion that the cell surface receptors are more diverse as compared to the endosomal receptors are the receptors that are present inside the cell. So why it is that? 
The reason is quite simple. Because surface determinants such as carbohydrates or lipids or proteins are more diverse than the nucleic acids. What are the endosomal receptors doing? These receptors are inside the cell. So these receptors would be involved in, you know, you can just guess it, detection of nucleic acids of the pathogen. C plus G island, as I told you about the C plus G motifs, that are common in bacteria and viruses, but not common in, uh, you know, in human DNA. So these receptors are going to recognize nucleic acids which belong to the pathogens, which is of the pathogenic origin, okay? But so uh, the other thing about nucleic acid is that variation in the, in the nucleic acid is not very common. But variation on the surface molecules, just like the surface carbohydrates or the surface lipids or the surface proteins of pathogen is a common feature, you know. Even a slightest change in the DNA can bring about conformational change in the protein encoding, you know, a slight, uh, you know, unnoticeable change in the DNA can bring about such kind of change, you know, but for a TLR receptor, that kind of mutation in the DNA may not be uh, very important when it comes to its interaction with that receptor, because maybe that mutation is not affecting the interaction of the tall like receptors with the DNA. It's going to use other motifs for recognition of the pathogenic DNA or RNA. It's not using that particular nucleotide which has uh, been mutated there. Okay, so although the nucleic acid mutations uh, they are not very frequent, you know, so it means that nucleic nucleic acids are not subject to change a great deal, but the carbohydrates and lipids and proteins found on the surface of pathogens are subject to change rapidly as compared to the nucleic acids, okay? And that's why it is needed that the cell surface star-like receptors may be, you know, uh, you know, should be more diverse as compared to the endosomal tall like receptors. And that's one understandable reason that why these receptors on the surface of, uh, you know, the immune cells are more variable, there is more genetic diversity as compared to the endosomal receptors which are inside.